Hey crafters, I'm Lisa Fulmer and I want to show you how to make something really cool. It's this statement ring in the shape of a fleur-de-lis. I'm telling you, the fleur-de-lis is probably my favorite design element of all time. I love it. I'm also going to show you how to make this really nice no-sew fabric cuff. Let's get started. These bezel shapes in the Gilded Life collection are so royal and romantic looking. I really love the fleur-de-lis the best and we're going to use the smaller one to make the ring. The bezels come with these little loops at each end for hanging, so use some heavy-duty clippers to snap those right off. I decided to use some faceted beads from some leftover trim to fill up the bezel, and it's going to give it a little extra texture and sparkle. Next, you want to carefully fill the bezel with a liquid resin, and then I placed a decorative bead right on top of the smaller beads in the center, and you follow the resin manufacturer's instructions for drying time. And before it's completely dry, while it's still a little tacky on the surface, you can place a few flat back crystals on top for extra accent. Use round nose beading pliers to make a small loop at the end of a short length of heavy gauge wire. This bezel happens to have two holes in the sides and they're perfect for feeding the wire through to make the ring without needing to glue or solder it. Angle the loop so that it nests right in beside the bezel's frame. And then you want to measure your finger and bend and trim the wire to fit the other end right up through the opposite hole and leave just a little extra to make another loop. I'm using the vintage brocade die from the Gilded Life as a stamp. Lightly rub the stamp pad over the die and make sure it's not too saturated with ink. A slightly dry pad works better so the ink stays on the top of the pattern. Place the die on the magnet sheet that's attached to your base plate, and then place a strip of canvas evenly on top. Add the blanket and the embossing plate, and then run it right through your machine. When it's done, take out the canvas and trim around the design. Then you want to heat set the ink with an iron. I really am in love with this pattern. Look at all that gorgeous detail. Trim a piece of fabric about a half an inch larger than the canvas, and you want to lay the fabric wrong side up then place the canvas on the top, right side up, and press in some seams to fold up over the edges of the canvas. Use some fabric glue to glue the seams in place and then let that dry. Add some thin grow grain ribbon on top to accent the edges. Use just a small amount of glue and then spread it out real thin with your finger or a brush. Press the ribbon down and pin it into place to hold it steady while it dries. Next, you want to trim and miter the corners of your fabric and glue them down and pin them in place while they dry too. To make a closure, punch a hole at one end and insert a grommet. Then you want to loop a piece of elastic cord through the grommet and leave a knot in the back. Sew on some decorative buttons and use one of the buttons at the other end to loop the cord around. So I hope you love that project as much as I do. I'm telling you, I could stare at this ring all day. I love it. And you know what I really love about this cup is it's delicate and romantic with the brocade pattern, but the black ribbon around the edge makes it for me because, you know, the girl loves to wear black. I'm Lisa Fulmer, and you know I think it's cool to craft.